Hello, everyone. Welcome back to SourceFed Nerd. I'm, I'm Ram. Sam. That never works. There's a bunch of fun things going on in Nerd World. I'm gonna gush over two of my favorite video games getting mashed together. There's a new look Power Rangers. Oh, hey, oh, whoa. Wait a minute. I want to talk about YouTube's answer to Netflix and Hulu. Oh boy, we're gonna start a fight. <laughs> It's a big day for us Nostalgia Boner owners. The strong National Museum of Play announced six new inductees into the World Video Game Hall of Fame. The titles are, can I get a dramatic drum roll? Yay. Ooh. 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 Ah. Ah. Ooh. Yay, thanks. Grand Theft Auto 3, Sonic the Hedgehog, The Sims, The Oregon Trail, Space Invaders, and The Legend of Zelda. Oh, Zelda! The World Video Game Hall of Fame is quite new, and when I say quite new, I mean it's a little nubile baby. It's in its second year. So the six that made it in this year will be joining Pong, Pac-Man, Super Mario Brothers, Tetris, Doom, and World of Warcraft forever in digital gaming glory. Speaking of amazing games worthy of being part of the Hall of Fame, two of my top favorite game franchises have come together thanks to Captain Direwolf. Behold, Halo 5 Pokemon! It's basically Pokemon Stadium where two players pick either a Venusaur, a Blastoise, or a Charizard, and it stays true to Pokemon as type advantage is integral to this rock, paper, scissors game. Grass beats water, water beats fire, fire beats grass. We also get to see Pikachu, Snorlax, Caterpie, Gyarados, Diglett, Magikarp, although they are just there for aesthetics. Players start off by entering a Pokeball platform and choose between three color-coded terminals. Then you enter your platform and your Pokeballs float to the ground and your opponent's Pokemon is revealed to you and you can just basically tell if you've already won or lost. But there are animations for their attacks which are so fun and when you win you get to snipe your opponent off their platform. Consider it a fun mini forge game. Thank you again Captain Direwolf for being so talented and sharing your creation with the world. Mod. I need a piece so bad. Thanks, right now. I'm gonna continue on gaming since new information about the intriguing Nintendo NX has surfaced. They're going back old school style. Now, rumor has it, according to screen critics, and this sounds a little bit sneaky, techy, clunky, so bear with me, evidence that a Chinese memory manufacturing company called Micronix reported a huge incline in ROM chip orders, far more than is necessary for the 3DS alone. And this could mean that Nintendo will favor the use of cartridges in the new NX console over optical discs that we've previously seen in the Wii and even GameCube. So let's simplify this for you guys. New NX console could be using cartridges and not discs. The rumor also suggests that Micronix have been testing chips with a 32 gig capacity. Now let's compare that with the 50 gig capacity that PlayStation 4 and Xbox Ones have already got. And then let's think about how many games already exceed that 50 gig, meaning that the Nintendo NX could require huge downloads for their games. Then again, let's not forget that Nintendo filed a patent for a console with no optical disc drive at all. So you may have to download all the games. Discs will be obsolete, games will be only downloadable, and all digital future is Staying on Nintendo, if you love it so much you'd wear it on your feet, well good news for you. Nintendo's teamed up with Vans to create a pretty sick line of shoes with designs of your favourite characters, like Princess Peach and Donkey Kong, and your favourite games, like Legend of Zelda, yeah, Zelda, and Old School Mario, New School Mario, not even New School, and Duck Hunt. They'll be hitting stores in June. And lastly, we've already shown you the transformation of the 90s TV repulsor from Power Rangers to the new Elizabeth Banks' take in the movie, which you can check out here. Well now it's time to unveil the new look for the Power Rangers. Let's take a look at what they used to look like. Oh, oh, so much like, so much lycra. There are no secrets in these outfits. And those metal mouths are a tad odd now that I really look at it. But I get it, they move their arms around so much when they talk, so I understand that that material provides much movement, some freedom. And let's take a look at it now. Holy Iron Man suit, copy stolen from Tony's mansion. What the batshit breastplates? Why in the balls are their belly button glowing orbs? Why in the f- I need an answer. And there is one. It turns out, it's aliens. Production designer Andrew Menzies said, Ours is an alien costume that grows on them. It's not man-made. You can't win everyone over. That's for sure. But we're trying to appeal to a more mature audience and gain new fans. Okay, okay, fine, that makes sense. My opinion of these colorful creations with the Robocop-esque helmets aside, let's not forget the fact that the chicks are wearing heels because that's what you want to be wearing when you're kicking some monster butt. What do you think? I'm interested. Talk to me. That's me done. Plan that out well. Yeah, enough about all those other <laughs> things. Let's talk about some talented nerds. Professional science man Grant Imahara and genius inventor man Alan Pan have teamed up to bring some superhero weaponry to life 
Sorta. Some of you might actually remember Alan as the man who built that replica Thor's hammer that only he could lift. So yeah, he's a pro. Together they combine their quick wits and know-how to make real-world functioning Avengers gear, specifically Cap Shield and Iron Man's gauntlets. Working is a loose term. The shield is more of a drone with a foam covering on top, and the laser on the gauntlet isn't powerful enough to blow up a car. But hey, they're still bonerific. The shield drone hybrid is commanded by the motion sensor controller on his arm, while the 3D printed gauntlet slips onto Imahara's arm with grace. They run them through a few tests, and I gotta say, it's pretty dope. Check out their build videos and whatnot in the video link down below. And the last piece of news of the day goes out to all the girls and boys who have a problem with TV binging. It just got a lot better. <laughs> Eh, it's still a problem though. YouTube is reportedly getting ready to announce YouTube Unplugged, or just Unplugged, a TV streaming service that would be right here. In the vid- In the video, I'm in the video, in the YouTube, that's what it is. How neat is that, kids? It seems like a pretty obvious move for YouTube, what with YouTube Red and their extensive movie library. According to sources, YouTube's parent company Alphabet has been shopping around for shows and deals at studios like NBC Universal, CBS, Fox, and more, most likely to lock down certain TV series to stream on Unplugged. Now, while most of these companies already stream on Hulu, it would be interesting to see what CBS shows would be available on Unplugged. They're a wee bit more protective about their brand. Anyways, YouTube is apparently trying to get this service out the door and in your hands by early 2017, so right around the corner. Now, it would be interesting to see if they would bundle this with YouTube Red as a way for consumers to get all their favorite video entertainment in one location. Heck, they may just keep them both separate anyways and have Unplugged over there on its own. Who knows? I am sure not an expert. Well, here's a question. Would you be willing to switch over from Hulu to Unplugged as a way to consolidate all of your entertainment? Personally, for me, they would have to make a pretty sweet deal for me to want to switch, possibly making it ad-free, but that would be impossible, obviously. But I want to hear your thoughts on all of this. Are you interested? Oh, P.S. There are some whispers that Unplugged could be a bundle service where you get four of your favorite channels for a good low price, which you could then go and add channels onto your account for more money, which is an interesting approach. Personally, I'm an old man who doesn't like to change things that aren't broke, so you're gonna need a bigger pool for me to change, but I'm still gonna check it out. You know what? Let's just wait and see what YouTube will officially say in a few months. Write your thoughts on all of this down below. That's it from us. Thank you guys for watching. Like this video, share it, do the do. I'm Sam Basher. The other two were Maud Garrett and Raina Scully, and we'll see you next time. Today's idiom, the devil is in the details. The devil's in the details actually comes from an earlier phrase you probably never heard. Les bon est dans les détails, which translates to the good God is in the detail, was attributed to Gustave Flaubert, who died in 1880, most likely of something dumb.